Episode 2 Veto a V2 The London and North Eastern Railway was one of the so-called Big Four companies, formed during the 1923 Grouping Act in Britain. In this form, with engines from the North Eastern region and Great Northern Railways, it lasted a mere 25 years, but left an everlasting impression of luxury, prestige and speed. 40 years after the end of British mainline steam, these are the stories they tell. Goods trains were the lifeblood of the LNER, coming in many forms, from the humble coal train to the elegant Royal Mail trains. Alan was of course a passenger engine, but I knew that he was more than capable of pulling heavy goods trains. I tried of course to keep Stephen busy, but as time went on he was able to do less and less. Thus, I procured a mixed traffic engine for the yard, a V2 engine that had been recently rebuilt at Doncaster Works. It was on the morning the V2 arrived that I found Alan and Sir Ralph arguing over their duties once more. I absolutely refuse to cooperate, Sir Ralph snorted, while Alan groaned with frustration. Look, I can't do both goods trains, and you've been rostered, Alan said. Why is it, Sir Ralph, that you have to be so lazy? 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 I am an express passenger engine, Sir Ralph sneered, and so are you, lest you forget. Leave the dirty work to the dirty little tank engines and mixed traffic half-breeds. Alan was indignant. Half-breeds? Yes, mixed traffic engines, Sir Ralph sneered further. Dirty engines don't know where they've been or what they're built for. Alan weeshed angrily. How can you say that? Your cousins, the A3s, were passenger engines first and foremost, young Alan. Sir Ralph said sweetly. Besides, there's a new engine coming today. He'll be drafted into the goods trains, I'm sure. Alan opened his mouth to argue further, but the foreman interrupted. That'll do, that'll do. The two engines glared at one another. Right, Alan, go pick up your goods train. Stephen's arranged it. It has to be at Little Bifon by 3.30. Got it? Got it, Alan said glancing towards the goods siding where a train load of vans waited for him. Sir Ralph, stop loitering around. Your stopping train's been waiting for you. I'm on my way, said Sir Ralph, hissing loudly as he left the yard. Good riddance, muttered Alan, who went off to collect his train. Later on, Stephen was resting in a siding. Having sorted all of the trucks out, and the coaches, at least for a few hours, the foreman had let him have a drink and a break. But not for long. Stephen! Stephen! Are you awake? Stephen opened one eye and saw the foreman. Yes, sir, he said, stirring himself. Oh, good. Uh, this is Herbert, Stephen. He's a V2 engine and the latest addition to our yard. Show him around, won't you? Yes, sir, said Stephen. And he puffed off to find him. Herbert was waiting in the yard. He looked quite nervous and jumped when Stephen said hello. Oh, oh, hello, he said, stammering slightly. I'm... I'm Herbert. Stephen, pleased to meet you, the old engine said. Have you come far? Um, uh, only Doncaster. I, I, I've been repaired, you see. A, it's a slight accident a few weeks ago at New England. Ooh, what happened? Well, I, I, I b b backed into a signal box after a bull got l l loose from its box, Herbert said, looking around anxiously, as if a bovine threat might be lurking. Oh dear. Stephen said kindly. Well, there's no cattle here. Why don't you help me shunt the trucks, and I can show you about the yard. That sounds w w w w wonderful, Herbert said, smiling for the first time. Stephen and Herbert had a wonderful morning. Although Stephen had already arranged the trucks, he decided to keep that quiet, so that Herbert could learn the yard's layout. Back and forth they went, until the foreman called them over, and told Stephen to take the permanent way gang up towards the tunnel. While he's doing that, the foreman said, Herbert, you can take the next stopping train. It's only three carriages long. You'll go along the branch line, you'll be fine. Y yes, sir, Herbert said. Stephen took the permanent way gang in their old train, whistling to Herbert as he passed, and Herbert eventually found his coaches, two old Gresley coaches, maroon coloured, with one BR Mark I brake van, and started his journey. He stopped at every station, collecting passengers and dropping them off all afternoon. The sun shone, the rails hummed, and he felt relaxed for the first time in a while. 
That evening, when he returned to the shed, he found that there was no room left, so he backed onto the coaling line and rested there. Everything seemed quiet, but as he started to fall asleep, he could hear muttering from the shed. I think we should veto the V2, Sir Ralph said, and the other engines reacted angrily. What's he done wrong, then? Alan asked. <laughs> He's just not a proper engine, Sir Ralph sniffed. At least the tank engines know their place and stick to it. There were more cries of protest, and Stephen called out for silence. Sir Ralph, he seems a nice hard-working young fellow. Why not give him a chance? The other engines muttered their agreement. <laughs> Sir Ralph laughed. Stephen, my good chap, I am being very, very harsh. Alan spoke angrily. Does he not come from the same metal? Or even, dare I say it, the same works? Sir Ralph harumphed. Right then, stow it in your smoke box and go to sleep, Alan said, closing his own eyes. Herbert felt glad that the other engines liked him, but was slightly hurt. He hadn't even met Sir Ralph yet. The next morning, Herbert ventured into the yard and found Alan waiting, simmering. Morning. You must be Herbert, Alan yawned. Welcome to the yard. Oh dear. For thanks, Herbert said, slightly nervous. He was just about to move off and collect his coaches when the foreman shouted something out to Alan's driver. Alan started laughing. I can't go, he said. I haven't got enough steam. Send young Herbert here. He'll do fine. Herbert suddenly found himself being driven towards the main line. Where are we going? he asked his driver. Sir Ralph has failed at Market Harbour with hot axle boxes, his driver replied. We're going to rescue the train. Herbert was thrilled. Sir Ralph sat grumpily in the siding, while his passengers waited angrily on the station platform. He was most indignant when Herbert backed down onto his train. They sent that to do my work, he snorted. Don't bang those coaches apart like you do to the trucks, mixed traffic. Herbert, for once, ignored him. The signal had dropped, the guard's whistle had blown, and he stormed out of the station, leaving Sir Ralph coughing in his wake of steam. Herbert had a wonderful run. He blasted through the English countryside, running very quickly and keeping to time. Presently, he saw his destination and began to slow. That evening in the shed, Alan and Stephen were congratulating Herbert. A very fine piece of work, Stephen said, and Alan agreed. Two minutes early. Even the station master is impressed, Alan said. Herbert smiled. For Thank you, he said. But what has happened to Sir Ralph? Oh, him? <laughs> He's still where you left him. The works can't attend to him for a week, Alan said, delighted. We're getting an engine from another region to cover for him, though, Stephen said, carefully. Although you pulled well enough for two today, and no mistake. Herbert was happier than he'd been in months. Sir Ralph was cold, alone and miserable on his siding. He'd learn his lesson soon enough, but that's another story.